All right, guys, we're going to be working off of kind of a wonky angle here because I want you guys to see what I'm doing. Um, today, I wanted to show you, really, dropping money on the ground. Today, I wanted to show you guys how to set up your two-point sling. Um, what I find interesting is I keep getting asked this question over and over again, and I'm like, hey, man, I'm cool. I'm cool with that because it shows that people are, what that tells me is that people are stumbling onto this channel. For those that are new, uh, and for those who, well, actually, I'll just say it for everybody. For, every, for everyone who's been watching this channel, quite literally within the last few months, you've noticed, man, I'm dropping a lot of content. Well, I've been dropping content about every 72 hours. Every three days, I'm dropping another video. A lot of that has to do with the fact that I had almost 200 videos in a backlog. So I've actually been at this for several months now. What's comical is that the algorithm is now pushing my own videos at me, which is just hilarious. So, um, but what that what ends up happening is people keep asking questions about things I've already covered, which tells me you guys are new. And I'm very glad for that because it means you're here learning. How to set up a two-point sling. Um, I've got my 13.7 drill pin and welded to 16 and a, as I put it, meaning that it's just 16 inches and a, over the edge. And this gun is ridiculously well balanced. And uh, it is such a pleasure to shoot. Um, because this is, there are, there are multiple categories, I should say this first. There are multiple categories of rifles. There is the home defense gun. My home defense gun is an 11.5 with a suppressor and a single point sling. My, um, my bug out gun is this one. And I'm seriously debating making this also my get home gun because I've set it up to be very lightweight. And, and I'll tell you now, what you're looking at, um, fully set up like this with sling is six pounds, 14 ounces. That's everything. That's light, hard sights, T1 on a mount, rail panels, uh, ladder panels, rail um, handguard covers. Um, everything as you see set up is six pounds, 14 ounces. That is amazing, considering that this Surefire War Comp is 3.8 ounces. I mean, this, this thing is a honking hog. It's 2.7 inches in length, 3.8 ounces of American steel. And you would think that uh, a, a muzzle device that, that, that big would cause your gun to be front heavy, but as you can see by the fulcrum of the gun, it's not front heavy actually inside the magwell. If you can get a fulcrum that is about here back on your rifle, that means that you're going to have a rifle that is essentially neutrally balanced. So this gun is kind of rapidly getting into that position where it's probably going to end up being my get home and bug out gun because it does everything except vehicle. It's just too long for vehicle. Anyways, moving on. Um, so because of that, it has a two point sling on it. And of course, it is my own two-point sling, tier one citizen two-point sling with bungee sewn into it. So how do I set it up? Well, what I do is, because I want a rifle that is as quiet as I can get it, and let me take the stuff out of the grip so you guys don't hear that rattling around. No motion, I'm sorry, no sound right? No sound. The reason for that is I don't have the quick detach. There should be a quick detach here. And of course, the Magpul CTR has a quick detach attachment point built right into the, into the sling. I'm sorry, into the buttstock. But I use paracord, knot it on the backside and melted. What you do is you knot it really, really tight, give it a good stiff yank, and then melt the ends into a mushroom together. And then same thing on the front. It's the same exact loop on the front. This is an option that I sell, guys. So, you know, don't ask me where you can get these. You can actually get them from me. And all you do is lace the sling through it. And you end up with a very, very quiet sling setup. So what you end up with is a rifle that is set up as quiet and as light as you can get it. With a good sling that's designed for carrying and fighting at the same time. Because most slings really only do one thing really well. It's like, for example, single point slings do fighting really well but single point slings don't do carrying really well. They do carrying well enough for a short period of time. You guys have seen me demo this before, where the single point sling gets used in the front and then passed around the front of the mag, slid to the back. That's for a short period of time where you gotta climb a ladder, render aid, 
whatever. But a, a two-point sling that is properly set up, most especially one with bungee, um, allows you to have a sling that allows you to put the weapon dead center if you want it, slide it off to the side if you want to get it out of the way, uh, so that you can go to your sidearm without anything out in front. Um, it is a sling that is very capable of doing all the things that you ask of a sling, which, which frankly is primarily retaining your weapon to your body. Your sling is essentially, how's that go? Your, the sling is to the rifle as the holster is to the handgun. Okay, so basically your sling is your rifle's holster. Where it gets interesting is when people set the sling up incorrectly, and most especially when you've got a sling that gets set and left like these do, you have to think well in advance. So what I'm gonna to say to you is put on your chest ring. Like for example, this rifle is sitting a little bit low for the way I would normally wear it because this, is, this sling is set up for when I've got my chest rig on. So normally the rifle would end up sitting about right there, which is ideally where I want it because from here, it goes right to the pocket of the shoulder. And by the way, while we're on that subject really quick, um, this versus this is really based on which which service of the military you've been in or which service of the military you pay most attention to. Um, you'll see Navy SEALs moving with guns like this. And the reason they do that is because um, they operate, it's, this is known as port arms, and they operate in boats. So you don't want to poke a hole with a straight round in the bottom of your boat, so you move port arms. Whereas army units move like this because the engines on Blackhawks are over your head. So it's muzzle up, muzzle down based on what it is you're doing or based on where you've served or based on what media you're paying attention to. So the reason I like muzzle down, I guess I should finish that thought. The reason I like muzzle down is from here, this, I can be challenging a person here and I can immediately get on them here. Whereas if I'm doing this, I then have to punch out and then drive back, which is why you, you see that motion. It's out back to get on the gun. Here, I'm already making contact with this. It's already touching my clavicle. So here, I just roll and I'm right onto the gun. So anyone that tells you this is faster than this doesn't shoot often enough to fully appreciate that muzzle down, making contact with the shoulder truly is faster. But getting back to the sling, when you're talking about setting up the sling, you want to have enough tension in the sling that it's holding the weapon to your body, accounting for chest rig and backpack if that's what you're wearing. When you go to store the, store the weapon, you want to have enough room. And this is where the Tier 1 Citizen 2 point sling comes in handy because there's bungee sewn into this. To store this weapon, all I do is I push out with, for me, my, my support hand is my right hand. I push out with my right hand and rotate back. So it's out and back. And you notice that sound that the sling just made. Listen. The webbing that I use is true mil spec, 4,000 pound rated webbing. This is, by what I was told by someone who was, uh, I think he was in the Army or Air Force, I forget, but this is what they tie Hummers down with whenever they launch them out of the back of aircraft. So I was like, okay, well, cool. Well, that's what I'm making my slings out of because it's legit um, um, mil-spec, 4,000-pound webbing. Um, I like this because years ago when I got into this industry, I'm not going to name any names, but I was trying a lot of slings. Back then I was a magazine writer, so I was trying a lot of different slings, and I kept going, man, these, the, the webbing is just crap, it frays. Well, it's because it was Chinese-made garbage. And when, I, um, when my buddy Daniel and I started making slings, we were using this stuff, I was instantly in love. This webbing is so nice, and it just does its job very well and very quietly. And so that's why I still use it to this day. So um, yeah, that's what I got for you guys. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Um, yeah, I think that's it. As always, thank you for watching, guys. I appreciate it. Have a good one. God bless you all. Get those guns out in practice.